Hey there, Perspective Backers. I am Pruitt, and this is Jim Davis. And today on WebDM, we are going to present a world of WebDM, or at least a book thereof. We're going to talk about the weird wastelands and the Kickstarter that shall present it. Shall we? Dun, 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 dun. Worlds of WebDM Weird Wastelands is our first book, and it's live on Kickstarter now. It's an environment-based toolkit for DMs and players where we give you everything you need to create player-driven 5e games in the fantasy post-apocalypse. We're introducing new support for wilderness exploration, giving you a complete class, the Scion, 12 new subclasses, tons of locations with maps, monsters, NPCs, adventure hooks, and hey, it's us so you know we're going to include badass encounter tables and more. We're writing it exactly how we think a 5e book should be, well-organized, full of references, and our WebDM wisdom, with tips and support in how to make the content easily fit into any 5e game and run the best games of your life. Back it on Kickstarter now. Link here and in the comments and description. All right, Jim, so uh, we got a thing going on here. Uh, yeah. The people know about. Let's tell them some more. Uh, we're doing a book here, and uh, first off, Jim, what what uh, what is this book? What what is this yeah. book? Why are we doing this book? Yeah, we're doing this book because we want to 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 create a supplement for Five E that we've wanted for a while. A very toolkit uh, approach to the book, and just decided like you know what, if it's going to exist, we're going to have to make it. And so, uh, uh, Worlds of Web DM, uh, Weird Wastelands is a toolkit book for playing in the weird wastelands that are left over after a you know, a post-apocalyptic uh, sort of event uh, in, a, in your typical fantasy setting. And it's there to both combine a sort of uh, challenge-based uh, approach to gaming, one that's things aren't taken for granted, you're having to deal with the harsh environment and the, the you know, survival needs of that, and meshing it with this kind of gonzo and, and over-the-top kitchen sink approach to traditional fantasy that really embraces the no conceptual limits uh, approach that new school uh, uh, games take. And like those two things go great together. And uh, I, I love them <laughs> and we love them here at WebDM. And so uh, this is our first book. Yeah, I mean, we all grew up on He-Man. This is, this is yeah. what it is. Um, <laughs> so uh, when doing this, this toolkit, like you said, uh, what kind of systems and support uh, can players and DMs uh, kind of expect in the overall, in the, uh, mm -hmm. in the big mm -hmm. view, big picture? Yeah, so we're looking at uh, at Five E and seeing which ways does it need to be shored up and and more rules support to address wilderness exploration and travel to make those parts of the game meaningful to give players real choices there and to give uh, DMs a chance to. Uh, embed this sort of narratively, uh, how to pace these kinds of uh, parts of the game, and really to not have it hand waved away or or auto succeeded away with a character ability, mm -hmm. but for it to be a part of the game itself, and that the adventure lies in the getting somewhere and the surviving that journey just as much as it does in getting to a location and exploring it. And so the rules uh, and the support that we're going to include is things like how to navigate a wilderness, how to handle the various hazards that will come up in it, and how to present all of that in a way that is engaging and fun for the player and not a huge chore. Um, mm -hmm. So we will get into the details in next week's video uh, specifically, but uh, that's really where we're at. Uh, yeah, because it does seem in, in, in 5e, uh, the default seems to be to hit the skip button. On yeah, the, uh, on the on the journey, it, it, which, it, it, really, it yeah. really is. It really is. <laughs> and remember and seeing and, a whole thing, or remember reading a quote <laughs> or something about adventure and journey, not destination. Something I don't know. Anyway, right? Maybe exactly. Cliche, yes. But, uh, <laughs> right. but there was bring, a quote let's, about let's, that. <laughs> yeah, let's bring that back around to the forefront. How about it? And if you'll notice this link here, and then these links down here in the comments and description, those are to the Kickstarter. So you can click this link or these links uh, and go check it out, support, uh, check the add-ons, and, uh, you know, let's make this weird wasteland a reality. 
So, uh, moving forward, uh, what kind of specific uh, DM support uh, are we working into this uh, into this beastie? Yeah, yeah, this is a big one for me, right? Like a, a, a book that I feel is going to support DMs in running the kind of adventures that uh, you know the, the book's about. Is that's that concept is is pretty important to me, and there's a lot of cool stuff out there in, in other supplements that, that uh, you know, kind of approaches this. Um, but for me, I'm really looking at specific tools that both inspire dungeon masters in terms of an aesthetic or a theme that they want to bring out, something that's just interesting, or in this case, weird or strange. And and just like, yeah, we'll bring it. Okay, you want to play a brain in a jar that's on top of a clockwork, uh, you know, gear forged type thing? Like, that sounds great. We're going to have that next to, you know, a living spell that, that's, you know, newly sentient. Like, that idea that there's not really any limits conceptually on what's in this place, that's how our tools uh, are going to be sort of arranged for that. So the locations are going to feature all just sorts of weird stuff. Um, and, and what we want here is something that's like it's going to fit into any kind of magical wasteland that you might have in your setting or it's going to fit neatly into this implied setting that we're going to include through all of the tools and advice and tables and monsters and all that good stuff um and mm -hmm. it, it's not generic it's not just like oh these are a bunch of bandits in a fort it's like no there's something to them there, there's something unique about them so that mm -hmm. like that crucial step of providing a a, a spark, a, a hook for your players to become engaged with isn't like left entirely up to the DM <laughs> to come up with on the fly. We're going to give you a little, uh, a little help with that. And then you're going to run with it the rest of the way for your group. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the kind of support that I like. Yeah. Yeah, it's not just bandits in a fort. It's time bandits in Fort Sumter trying to stop the, <laughs> no, anyway. Uh, <laughs> no, you just gotta, right. yeah, like you said, kitchen sink it's uh that's that's what i like about it like because we we both grew up like watching like he-man uh playing the fallout games uh whether they were the yeah. top down or getting into you know three-dimensional whatever but like there is something about a wasteland uh, or, or a wasteland is one thing but a post-apocalypse is another and when you put yeah. those two things together it's yeah. like you were literally cleaning the slate so to speak you're leaving some things behind that can be reused in different ways, but it's just a different, like it allows you to play any way you want, really. You can still have an mm -hmm. old old school mentality for your character if you want to just make a, a knight in shining armor. But you know, don't fall in the don't fall in the fluids because <laughs> that ain't water and that ain't mud. <laughs> I'm not no, sure what it is, no. where it's from. No, it's not. <laughs> no. If it's alive. Um, no. But to, um, <laughs> right. To kind of like stick with uh, stick with some of these tools and give you guys an idea mm -hmm. of what uh, what's going to be in the book uh, a bit more. What we're looking at at locations is is you know like we were saying to to make them more specific, to more flavorful, so that uh, there's something to spark your imagination and go with. But then also to present a a situation in stasis, right? Like I'm I'm not so much about like pre-made adventures or stories and the like but rather setting things up so that you can create a story out of this that your players then develop and, and becomes the emergent story of that, that session, you know? And so mm -hmm. a lot of the locations we'll have, we'll have things like, all right, well, this, this set of encounters that could happen at this location will produce one kind of scenario. But if you select a different group of encounters or roll a different group of encounters, then it could produce something else entirely. And so that in this way, the locations are very multi-use and modular. Um, mm -hmm. as well as giving you a template for creating your own uh, if, if you're so inspired. Um, it's kind of similar with the monsters. Um, each of the locations will have its own sort of unique monster that could be a layer there uh, if it wanted, uh, but it can also be used independent of that. And to sort of like present these monsters not just with weird and different abilities that maybe hit your players where they're not used to being hit. Um, you can mm -hmm. see some of that in our DM uh, DM's Guide to Fighting Dirty shows uh, about some, where some of our thoughts are there, um, but are also like useful, you know, and, and presented with useful information to the DM. How to run this thing in combat, how to role play this monster if, if uh, you know, that should happen. What are its goals? What does it want? How can they appease it? And then like, what can we get out of it? <laughs> you know, either 
what can we take off of its uh, rapidly cooling dead body, or um, what can it uh, you know impart for us for favors or something like that. So <laughs> uh, all of that's designed to create encounters and hooks that you use to you know either make a one shot or ongoing campaign you know whatever it is you need for your game. Yeah, and that's uh, and like you said, uh, this type of book uh, it's it's. It's, it was used a lot in, in past editions, and, and that was some of the inspiration for it, like having an, uh, like not a specific setting, but like you said, an implied setting of just like, yeah, wastelands or on the water or, you know, right. in the snow. Uh, yeah, and just yeah, kind of sure. <laughs> uh, having these environmental books uh, so that you can make whatever you want, and it's just just gives you the things you need. Like I, I it's, ugh, like I said, this is what, this is what something. This is something that people want and need, uh, and that's that's what we want to make sure that we provide because it, you know. yeah, it, it's all there to facilitate a kind of sandbox uh, game where you're either dropping this into your own world or creating a new one whole cloth, which we'll give you some guidelines for. So yeah, absolutely, yeah, most definitely. Um, so uh, we went over some of the uh, the DM support items, uh, but let's let's talk about uh, the more player facing options. Juicy uh, where, stuff. Where do you want to start? Yeah. Let's let's start with this brand new class that we're making, or currently, I should oh. say that you're mostly oh, oh uh, taking the lead oh, on God. now. So, <laughs> uh, yes, I don't want to different. put you on the spot. <laughs> oh no, no, hey, uh, I I see it written right there. Uh, no, uh, working on the working on the Scion here. Uh, it's you know it's this is, this is nothing new, but all new. Uh, try that's the thing is trying to make a something that there's been many versions of both in past editions and yeah you know there's or multiple multiple uas in the current edition and and there's been Certainly. some stuff on on dm's guild uh but uh, trying to just think about it in a new way and really like boil it down to like to me like what is a scion like right. to me a scion is somewhere in between like a jedi and there are many x-men uh that that <laughs> that you could you could put into could, that yeah, pool certainly. as well uh, but like really just trying to boil all that down and like come up with something that uh, to me uh, right now what it's looking like uh, it's 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 almost there it's it's one of those things where you're looking almost at there. your creation and you're like oh you just mm, yeah, just a little happens. bit more uh, just but a little but, more, but yeah. what I what I wanted out of the scion is I wanted a workhorse and and so in in other editions and past editions like a, a multitude of options uh, for powers or disciplines or whatever you want to call them. Um, and so, uh, I will say this, we're going to pare that down a little bit and add a little bit more nuance to the powers that you have. So it's more mm. about kind of living with these things and, and them being a part of you as opposed to just a menu of 20 things, you yeah, know, yeah. get it back down to closer to, uh, to Jean Grey levels of just like, oh, I can move <laughs> stuff and read minds, you know, or whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the heart of it and the, the sentence that I always come back to is I want a workhorse. I want sure. something that can go all day, but also uh, uh, a, a true workhorse can work itself to death. And that's the, that's that's uh, I will say there's I want options in there for players to basically burn bright, sh sure. so to speak. If the Sometimes. situation were to call for it is the idea. It's like, yeah. uh, you know, you could endanger yourself, but. I want to give you that option. Like yeah, yeah, you yeah. can push yourself, you know, once you get to certain levels. Uh, but again, uh, details will be one thing, uh, <laughs> but this is more just to tease you. But yeah, like, uh, yeah, we'll so if you want a scion on, that can uh, just, on that. yeah, well, I mean, you know, may, mayhap we'll just have to do a show on the scion <laughs> later and uh, we can get a little bit further into it. But yeah, in a, in a, in a nutshell though, if you want a workhorse that can do some fun stuff and do it well and, and do it, for the majority of the day, uh, you know that's that's what I was going for. But let's let's get into some of the some of the deets of the uh, of the subclasses because we got one for uh, each class. Uh, so uh, why don't you give us a uh, give us a little bit of that, Jim Davis? Yeah, certainly. So I'll start with the one that's in the the promo uh, over on the Kickstarter, and then uh, uh, speak a little bit about the others afterwards. So over on the promo, we've got the Circle of a Broken Land Druid, and this is a barbarian-inspired uh, martial druid uh, that is there to lay a beat down on the enemies of of the wastelands, those that that like caused the wastelands in the first place, or those who would continue to abuse the various 
uh, you know, magical powers that uh, that ruined this place. Uh, this is mm-hmm. this is the druid that fights those. Um, and it's got a mm-hmm. lot of familiar class features uh, that you might recognize from other classes, but uh, we presented them in a way that's different, allows for more player choice in the matter, as well as interfacing with some of the uh, uh, systems and um, uh, mechanical support for uh, exploration and travel. Um, so you can kind of get a, a feel for where we're going by checking out the Circle of the Broken Land Druid. Um, but for the others, we've got uh, Barbarian will be a path of the monster champion. And this is sort of uh, representing those wastelanders and people out in the post-apocalyptic world who seek the sort of patronage of monsters and therefore inspired by it. A barbarian that uses uh, its rage to tap into sort of the monster's abilities uh, will be what this uh, barbarian is like. The, um, the Bard College of Bones practices... Uh, essentially culinary necromancy to both preserve mm-hmm. knowledge of the past and share it amongst others and to provide that all uh, important comforting food <laughs> to help you and keep you uh, you know restored out in the wastes um, yeah it just uh, the, makes monster lore a little bit more tasty exactly so. <laughs> exactly right yeah. really brings it uh, home and makes it real for the party uh, besides we want you guys to be eating a bunch of gross things in your games as a result of this book um, <laughs> so. like, that a, like an eating game like in the game right, you know, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's also the <laughs> right yeah <laughs> There's the uh, aesthetic domain cleric who uses uh, sort of abilities focused around uh, fortitude and endurance and vitality through their devotion uh, and and will feature uh, abilities that make use of the hit dice in various ways, sort of either lending them to others or having kind of a minimum for themselves, uh, as well as being able to manipulate and uh, remove exhaustion levels um, because you're going to be racking them up uh, as you travel through the uh, magically irradiated deserts of the place. Um, we have the Reaver Marshall archetype for fighter, uh, and this is the stereotypical kind of like wandering warrior type that you see in a lot of post-apocalyptic fantasy, someone who maybe fights for themselves or for others, but the idea is that they can survive out here in the wastes and they are very adept at equipping themselves at a moment's notice uh, should they find themselves sans weapons and armor, <laughs> uh, which uh, very, very well may uh, happen. Um, Way of the Wandering Monk is a uh, strength-based monk based around endurance and sort of physical hardiness and leans more into the physical side of the monk uh, narrative as opposed to the spiritual uh, side that uh, that you sometimes see. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Oath of the Slayer Paladin is a kind of take on vengeance, but uh, our own sort of unique spin on it and represents that kind of come hell or high water, this monster has to pay uh, archetype. And so feature uh, abilities that uh, facilitate the slaying of those who have crossed some sort of line and just need to be put down uh, in in a a kind of like wasteland justice uh, manner. Mm -hmm. Um, Alvin and Josie Wales, got it. (laughs) Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, the scavenger archetype for Ranger is one that I'm really uh, looking forward to showing you guys. Essentially, this is kind of a Ranger that will make use of the things that they find out in the wasteland, is there to both survive the wilderness, but also to be able to exploit the artifacts that, uh, that they'll find in the various ruins uh, of this place. They're kind of a all-arounder type uh, in that they'll be good at a little bit of everything and you know ranger is going to be a real asset uh, to a lot of the uh, challenges that your party will face and so we wanted an archetype that leans heavily into the post-apocalyptic wasteland uh, that these rangers will find themselves in Um, for rogue we've got the enforcer Mm. The ever popular uh, strength based rogue uh, that we're finally going to make our uh, mark with. Um, but these are the, you know, various uh, ne'er do wells and brigands of the waste. Uh, th- th- these rogues represent those that, that use uh, might makes right uh, and, mm-hmm. and are focused around grappling and holds and uh, various things uh, to express their, uh, their prowess. <laughs> 
well, you gotta have those those people to go the, to go do the leg breaking, and they gotta go yes. sneak around. And so, uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's one that I'm very excited for. Like a lot of these, these are things that we've talked about wanting to see ourselves uh, as in various uh, supplements. So now it's time to throw our hat in the ring for them. Uh, and rounding out our subclass list, we've got the th- the the arcane th- trio, um, oh, yeah. uh, desiccant <laughs> desiccant soul sorceress origin. Those who are sun scorched and dried out by the wastelands sometimes find themselves mm. imbued with magical powers uh, that uh, that manifest as uh, sorceress spells and the like. Um, so would you say this is uh, a like a like a like a mummy or a lich in the making almost? Almost, yeah, like like a yeah. par baked mummy kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. Yes. Um, and then uh, for Warlock, we have the Apocalypse Otherworldly Patron. Yes, your Warlock can make a pact with the very forces that caused this wasteland uh, to begin with and draw power from whatever cataclysmic event uh, that uh, you rolled on on our table of random apocalypses. Um, and then uh, for the Wizards, we've got the School of Technomancy. Um, this is sort of a wizard uh, that is blurs the line between wizard and artificer but is very much about using their spells through technology they're going to feature a lot of uh, custom spell foci the ability to modify it to get various bonuses when using their sort of technological uh, uh, spell foci and they cast spells as well as command over constructs and automaton and things like that um, very uh, very much based around uh, the new technomancy uh, spells that will include in the player option uh, chapter as well Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was a great rundown of uh, of that. So uh, as far as the player facing options, we we have a couple more. You mentioned the spells, and we'll get those in a second. But we got mm-hmm. some variant features. Uh, what what are the what are those going to look like, Jim? Yeah. So there's a lot of things in uh, in in baseline five e that I would consider sort of like guaranteed successes or auto wins uh, when it comes to traveling journeys, wilderness exploration, that kind of thing. And so the class feature options uh, are going to be variants for those. So uh, the, the idea is that you take the variant that we present in Weird Wastelands and you replace your uh, baseline class feature with it um, so that you can interact with the new rule subsystems in a way that, that doesn't like bypass the moments of conflict and the moments where something interesting might happen and rather like just makes you better at navigating those moments. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, the, the classic example to me is like getting lost. Getting lost is interesting in, in a wasteland uh, environment because how much how many resources you have is important and if you're lost it's going to take you more time to get where you want to go so instead of saying that never happens i'm just going to be better at it and better at navigating those things then the idea is that every class will have something here that they can use either alongside their existing class features or to replace class features uh, and that these variants will be compatible with and supported by everything else uh that's in weird wastelands nice uh, and as far as the, the as some of the spells, or at least the ideas for uh, the, the spells that we'll present here, what do you, what do you uh, have to say on that? So we've got two kinds of spells that we're going to have for you guys. We have brand new ones that just come out of our whatever fevered imagination uh, that we have that, uh, at the time of writing them. Um, a lot of them designed to support the various subclasses uh, that will be included. So like, you know, uh, variants on Flame Blade for a uh, circle of Broken Land Druids or variants on Goodberry or Tiny Hut or something like that. Uh, again, we're looking here to, to not cut out these spells entirely from the game. Players choose Goodberry berry they choose tiny hut because they want to have a spell in a clutch situation like oh crap we've ran out of food well i have this backup for us guys or we can't find shelter i got this covered so i don't want to like ban those spells outright but as they currently exist they make certain challenges that are part of wilderness exploration trivial and they completely bypass them and so rather than like providing an auto win or a complete bypass we provide something that gives you an advantage in those situations or that might give you a limited resource to help you out in an emergency but not something that's like becomes standard procedure that you're casting and using every time because it just like lets you completely bypass this part of the game um so we're taking a model of providing variant spells uh, for those as opposed to telling dms to just ban them entirely because it's also fun to be able to conjure a magical shelter or magical food you know like that's that's why you play mm-hmm. those classes and pick those options uh but we want but something living that on works magical food. 
You know, living on magical food is another matter entirely. Uh, you guys love to check out that part of the DM section uh, when you get the book in your hands. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but yeah, to keep those options on the table, um, but but change them so they're compatible with uh, the rest of the features of the book. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Jim, as we're as we're kind of uh, rounding out this, uh, just kind of a, a brief intro. Uh, so to speak, uh, into what you get with this book. What's something that you want people, uh, uh, prospective supporters of the Kickstarter uh, to to think about? Or, you know, what, what's a word yeah. that you want to give them? I, I want you to think about this book being a, a way to tap into a different play style that you might not be used to. One that doesn't take a lot of things for granted and, and isn't there to facilitate like high octane heroic action but is there to facilitate a kind of slower game where planning and thinking ahead and sort of considering uh, the, the place of the characters in the world uh, is important and is very player focused in that the players make decisions that drive the game, that they're not gonna be railroaded into something that's, that's gonna be a death trap. Um, there's gonna be a lot of things in the book that are very deadly, very inconvenient. You're not gonna want them to happen to your character. We hope that they're interesting and that they don't like make for a boring moment, but it might not be beneficial to your character. This place is dangerous. There's a lot of threats and hazards. And so what we want is to make that kind of play not a burden for the player, but engaging even if their character is going through something challenging and difficult. Um, so that that is engaging and fun because you get a chance to overcome these things. You get a chance to have to deal with mm -hmm. like all these adversities and, and, and obstacles. And then you have a host of abilities to call upon in that moment to help get you through that. Uh, and so mm -hmm. I think that like that kind of challenge based play in a setting that's just weird and kind of gonzo and get familiar uh in some ways uh, in the best ways that post-apocalyptic uh mm -hmm. you know genre can be um like makes that a very engaging experience because it certainly is for me and it certainly has been for the the groups that i run these kind of games for so yeah uh, yeah and you know if you go through adversity and you survive it it should leave you changed yeah. and we have real support for that too like when they get through these things some of times they're going to be changed we hope so Maybe for the better, hopefully for the better. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll see. But, uh, but yeah, like, uh, I hope I uh, enjoyed this uh, kind of breakdown of uh, what, what's in the uh, what's in the Kickstarter. We hope, uh, certainly hope that you support it and uh, check yeah. back next week for some wilderness exploration fixes. Absolutely. The hacks are in. Yeah, go check out that Kickstarter, guys. Do we want to go over any of the add-ons and include that in this, or? Which ones are you thinking about? I don't know. The DM workbook and the screen, mostly. <laughs> we don't have to. I, I think that those, I think that if we put that in the promo spot. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. Like, yeah. if I think that that's the place to put that. Okay. Is, and the promo good. spot is the spot. Are we recording that separately or is that being cut from the, the Kickstarter that, promo? That video? will be cut from the Kickstarter promo video. There might be a separate VO to do for it. I'm not sure. Okay. I mean, I mean, the most meta thing we could do is talk about like the DM workbook and the DM screen and all that add on stuff. And you just make this a stinger and you put it on the end of the episode. But it's true. That's good. We added on. Did it. Yeah, I did it all for you there in one sentence. <laughs> <laughs>